guys, I'm Adu playing Dev May Cry 4 Special Edition. This is Mission 8 of my Nero and Dante, Dante Must Die Difficulty video guide. I apologise for the last video. Yeah, it sucked. I know. It was... I had to do it though, because I wanted to get it out of the way. Well, okay, I didn't have to do it, but I wanted to get it out of the way because it was really pissing me off. And you know when you've tried solving something so many times and you just can't? And you just get to the point where it's just like, you know what, fuck it, I'm just going to abandon it. Well, that's what the point I got to. And is it professional? No. Is it good? No, not really. But it still fits the purpose of the guide, and I'm willing to give myself a bit of leeway for that. Because of the nature of the last video, I didn't get to have the commentary that I wanted, so I'm going to provide a bit of that here. In the last mission, I wanted to talk about enemy design a little, and I wanted to talk about how... Chimera infected enemies and uh, faults were the worst de designed enemies in the game. And the reason for that is because faults exist to piss the player off, right? Faults exist to make the player go back in the level. They exist so the developers can say, huh, Guess what? You've got to go back in the level now. <laughs> Joke's on you. And Chimera infected enemies I only dislike because they... Their attack is seemingly random, you know, when they do their random bullshit. And that, to me, is just sucky. Like, I would add a tell to it, which would make it a good enemy, because they exist to make the player adapt their playstyle, right? They exist so the player can't go full retard aggression, and that's good, because in Devil May Cry 3 they did that by having those shield guys that would have a little tell, right? They'd get into this stance, which kind of said, hey, I'm going to attack you now, and then the player had a chance to respond to it. And that is very good design, because it alters the player's playstyle without punishing them with randomness, nor making them play overly defensive, because that's what you tend to do against overly um, against Chimera-infected enemies. But that's just... That's my personal opinion, and there will be people that disagree. Maybe faults are the best-designed enemy in the game, and I just don't get it. I mean, that's definitely a possibility, but I don't think so. There were a couple of other things. I can't remember them off the top of my head. I'm sure it'll come up. Uh, just get past these guys. There's no point fighting them. I don't want to fight them. They're coming out infected enemies. Like, if they just had a tell, right? Like, if before the sword slashed, they just sort of did a little hop, then that would be cool. It'd be fine. Oh, I've got a funny-ass story to tell about this part. Okay, so... When I come to this area as Dante, when I first came to this area as Dante, I never figured out the puzzle. And I, when I played Nero for the first time, I trial and errored this until I eventually got it. But when I played Dante, I couldn't work it out. And when you got to the second area like this, then you, I just couldn't work out that you had to go back on yourself. So I was there, like, wandering in circles, fighting enemies for a good hour or so. And I remember being, like, you know, 12 or some shit. And I remember clearly dropping my controller on the floor in frustration, accidentally moving my character backwards to actually quote-unquote solve the puzzle, and that's when it finally clicked that the shadow is actually meant to go the opposite direction. And I just never worked that out. <laughs> it was fucking sad, but I was glad out, oh, because I was getting very pissed off, because as a kid you just want to, you know, get on top of it, right? This isn't a particularly long mission. We're almost at Kratos already. It's, it's, it's probably the shortest mission in the game, aside from one, I think. Maybe mission 20 as well, depending on how good you are at it. There are some tips for Kratos. So, here's the thing with Kratos. He is a hard boss. And the reason for that is just because he's very fast. He does have tells, but he is very fast, and it is quite hard to dodge as a result. So, what you need to do is, if you really struggle with him, and it's not the damaging part, you understand the damaging part, I recommend just coming to him and just dodging him for ages until you eventually die, and just learn his attack patterns to get used to them. There's a specific attack you want to bait out, and I'll try and demonstrate that. That's the combo you want to bait out. And after that, you can get a bit of a hit in, and you can just keep on get wailing into a shield, eventually leading to that good old thing we know. I fucked that up. <laughs> you can grab those and send them back if you didn't know. Alright, do your combo. So if you stand at about this distance, you should do that combo. That's the one you want, because you can punish it. With either a charge shot level 3, you can dash in, or you can just grab his shield, depending on what your goal is. Can I grab you? No. But that's the specific combo you really want to bait out, which is when you stand at about this distance. Because you can just jump back and dodge it, and it's not a problem. 
and it is a little bit cheesy. There are definitely better ways of doing it, but this is the safest. Oh, I fucked that up. Okay, so you see there that I just didn't dodge the very well, and that's entirely one million percent my bad. Man, I'm bad at that timing. It's not hard. With a bit of practice, you'll definitely be able to get it. I just suck at it. Boom. Take that. So the goal is you want to just keep on hitting a shield. If you jump too early, you can just release your charge shot. Can I get this? Oh, man, I suck at that. I'll stop doing that. <laughs> it's not that hard. It really isn't, but I just suck at it. Boom. I wonder why a shield just disappears like that. Because I didn't even hit it that much, and I didn't even hit it to trigger that. just did it. There you go. So you can use the momentary extra air gained from charge shot to... I'm focusing, that's why I'm not talking so much. To dodge his move, should you miss time. Ah, oh, I fucked that up. But yeah, abuse your jumps and abuse your dodging iframes. Oh no, I should have devil triggered. Fuck. <laughs> I fucked that up. Boom, smack him. <laughs> oh, well, that takes a long time. take that. But as you can see, like it's just the dodge timings you need to get down. Like, charge shot level 3 will do all the damage. And as you can see, I fucked up a lot in that fight. Like, I did not. That was not graceful in the slightest. Like, that was not an impressive run by any means. But I was still able to do it with ease because I know those dodge timings. That's the thing you really want to do against Kratos. And I'm going to take a little bit of time at the end of this video just to discuss, like, what why Kratos is a really good boss. Because he's not... He's hard because he's fast. He does a decent amount of damage. His attack patterns are not the easiest to get used to. But he he has tells and he doesn't punish you for with bullshit. Uh, for example, with randomness. It's just a case of like the fact there. I got hit, every time I got hit there was because I fucked up. Like not once was it because he changed his attack halfway through or there was any randomness or I clashed something when it shouldn't. No, it was just I got hit there because I misplayed, I played it badly. And that is a very good boss design. That makes Kratos such an incredible boss. And I believe most people feel the same way. But anyhow, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys.